Let's get started on your notes over quadratic applications. We're going to work through several problems. The first problem is a problem involving projectile motion. These notes are designed for Algebra 2. There are four different examples, and we'll work through one, each one at a time, using this graphic organizer. So let's first look at the problem. The problem states, Kyle hits a golf ball, and it follows the projectile, h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 90 t, where h is the height of the ball in feet after t seconds. So in this particular problem, we're given a function. We're told that the variables represent h is height and t represents seconds. So whenever you're given a problem with an equation or a function in there, I want you to take your graphing calculator and plug that into y equals. So I want you to pause the video right now and plug it into y equals using Desmos, using your graphing calculator, plug it in, change your window, and see what it looks like. So hopefully you have graphed it on your graphing calculator, and what we're gonna do is draw a rough sketch of what this graph looks like on this graph below, and we're gonna label our axes. So what it looks like is it goes to the point zero, zero, it goes to the origin, and then it goes up, and then it goes down, and it crosses the x-axis right here, and up here would be the highest point. We know that our y value, the h value, represents the height, so let's label that. That represents the height in feet, and then the x value represents time and we're talking about time in seconds. So now let's work through our problem. The first part, problem A, says at what time will the ball reach its maximum height? And I wanna highlight that, at what time? At what time will the ball reach its maximum height? So at what time? We're looking for the T value, will it reach its maximum height? H value. So at what time? We're looking for the X value. Up here, this point right here, that vertex, that maximum, is the point where this uh, golf ball is going to reach its highest point, right? As it follows the, the path, it, that's, that is the point where it's going to reach its highest um, height. So what do we do when we're looking for the X value of the vertex? We're gonna use that formula, x equals negative b over 2a. That gives me the x value of my vertex. So we're gonna use this, um, this equation right here, negative 16t squared plus 90t, and we're gonna plug in our values into x equals negative b over 2a. So negative b, in this case, b is 90, so negative 90 over two times negative 16, and I get, negative 90 over negative 32, and I'm gonna use my calculator, negative 90 divided by negative 32, and I'm gonna round, sorry about that, three decimal places out, so we're gonna round approximately 2.813 seconds. So there's my answer for that. That is the time at which this ball reach its max, reaches its maximum height. So what were we looking for? We were looking for the x value of the vertex in this situation. Let's move on to B. And I'm gonna change colors here. B says, what is the maximum height of the ball? What is that maximum height? Okay, so we know that the x value of the vertex is 2.813. How do we find that y value when we're given the x value for that point? Well, we're gonna plug it in. We're looking for f of, or in this case, h of, h of 2.813. So we're going to plug in that x value or that t value in for our variable right here and right here. So negative 16 times 2.813 squared plus 90 times 2.813. So I'm just substituting those values in for the variable and you can go ahead and pause the video and plug this into your calculator negative 16 times 2.813 squared plus 90 times 2.813 and what I encourage my students to do when you're using a calculator is to plug all of this in 
exactly as you see it. You can do that, or another strategy is to plug in this right here, then plug in this right here, and then you add those two values. But you wanna make sure that you're grouping things correctly on your calculator. So you should have gotten H of 2.813, is approximate or equal to because we already rounded 126.563 feet and there's my answer 126.563 feet after how many seconds will the ball reach the ground so and let me put this up here 126.563 that's up there we're labeling those key points and let's move on to the next one after how many seconds, okay, that's time, will the ball reach the ground? Okay, the ground, what's the height when the ball hits the ground? Well, that is where our height is zero. So after how many seconds will the ball reach the ground? Well, the height is zero. We're looking for this point right here. We're looking for our zeros. Oop, that doesn't really look like an R. We're looking for our zeros. So what do we do when we're trying to find our zeros? We can factor it. That's what I like to do, always try first. We can factor it. We can use the quadratic formula. We can complete the square. What I like to always try to do first is factor. So I'm going to set y equal to 0, negative 16t squared plus 90t. What can I do? I can factor out a GCF. They're both even, so I know they're divisible by 2. I can also factor out a variable, so 0 equals, let's factor out a 2t, times negative 8t plus 45. That's what that looks like, right? Negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. 90 divided by 2 is 45. So, and we factored out a t. So now I've got this... Um, quadratic and I factored it. I'm going to set my factors equal to zero. I'm going to use that zero product property. I'm going to set this equal to zero and solve for t and I'm going to set this equal to zero and I'm going to solve for t. Okay so let's do that now. When we solve for t in this first one I'm going to divide by two and I get t, I get t equals zero. In the second one I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8, or I'm sorry, whoop, that should look like that, negative 45. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8, and you can use your calculator, and I get t equals negative 45 divided by negative 8 equals 5.625, 5.625. So let's look at this. After how many seconds will the ball reach the ground? We have two solutions here. We have this solution and we have this solution, but we really only need one. This first solution where t equals zero, that's this zero right here. That's our origin. That's actually our starting point. So in this situation, we do not need that zero. We only need 5.625. So let's write that out. 5.625 seconds, 5.625 seconds. And one of the things I actually want you to write down on your notes is, let's go back to B really quickly. We found the maximum height of the ball. I want you to make a note there so that you can refer back to this. We were looking for the Y value of the vertex. Okay, the Y value of the vertex. All right, let's go to D. What is a reasonable domain for this situation? So we're looking for the domain, oh, and the range. So domain, X values, range, Y values. What's the reasonable domain? For this situation, you know, a functional domain is different than a situational domain, right? The functional domain for this would be all real numbers, right? Negative infinity to, in po to positive infinity. But for this situation, we're actually going from this point to this point. That's all we care about. What is that domain? The domain is from zero, and we're including zero, zero seconds, to where it hits the, where the ball hits the ground. Which domain? We're looking for x values, so that's a zero, right? And that zero is 5.625, zero. So our domain is zero to 5.625. And we're including those points. What would our range be? 
our range from low to high, right? Um, it's not going to be from negative infinity to the highest point up here. It's going to be from zero, right? Because we're not going to have a negative height for this situation, right? Situational domain and range are different than a functional domain and range. Up to that highest point, which is 126. 0.563. How do I know that I'm using that point and not the 2.813? Range, we're looking for y values, and you have to remember x comma y. Okay, so that concludes this first problem. The next video will be the next example over trajectory.